Time again for another video on how to edit black and white images. And uh, I've got some images here from uh, a local artist here in Seattle, Cassie Murphy, who is kind enough to lend us some of her images for this video. So the challenge in editing black and white videos is that you want that white to be black. And it's the same challenge that you have when you're editing watercolors that you've taken a picture of. Now, in our case, uh, what we have here is an image that is about 30 by 40 large and contains uh, five drawings within it. If you're shooting with, um, if you're photographing with uh, DSLR, you probably only have one image per shot, but you're still going to have to crop into it, etc. Um, so we kind of start here, and I'm going to do this whole thing in real time. Um, Got to flatten this image here. I had a little high pass layer on it. Uh, I'm going to do this whole thing in real time here. So what I'm doing now is just kind of cloning out the magnets. Uh, we uh, photograph these against a wall. It's a magnetic wall, and so we hang a lot of artwork with magnets, uh, which is very convenient. So we're just going to get those out of here. Um, you may have something else holding your pictures up or a piece of tape or something you want to clone that out now we've kind of got our images here they are so we're going to start by taking uh, one of these I'm going to choose this one right here and I'm going to put a mark A around it now uh, there are different ways to make this its own image um, one, the easiest way I think is to copy command C um, and then you say command N for new file and take it from the clipboard here you can see that and create it and then just paste it. Now you've got your image in there with a white background. Um, so the trick here is we are going to, I'm going to flip this around. So rotate image. So I believe that is, anyway, that's how I'm going to work with it right there. Um, we want to isolate that black and or the white. And oftentimes it is easier to isolate the black than it is the white, even though it's the white that you want to select. So what I'm going to do now is go up here to select, and I'm going to select color range, right? And I'm going to select black. Let's see what I get here. Um, I've got a fuzziness of zero, which probably isn't doing us any good. So let's try it like that. Um, you can do a couple of things in order to select your blacks. You can shift click and keep selecting areas until you can see here in the preview that you're getting all of what you want. Um, and then you can also select the fuzziness range and increase this until you know you have everything. Now, once you've gone far enough that you start to see gray in this area is right here and you know you're selecting um, some of the white instead of the black, um, you know you've, you've gone too far. So we're going to start there and see what we get. You can see our squiggly lines. <clears throat> now this is a pretty good initial indication of what you've got. Um, and now what I do is I will go in and out of quick mask. So quick mask, if you're not familiar with it, is the Q key. <clears throat> and once you've pressed on quick mask <clears throat> and you're in quick mask you can use all of the tools available to you uh, to select and deselect um, things so right now I'm, I'm simply erasing um, using the eraser tool and you can see that I'm taking this black area right here and sort of erasing where I was getting all those squigglies within here. Now, some of these squigglies I'm going to kind of want. So I'm, not, I don't, I'm not sure I want to clean this up too much because where you've got these little white dots and you've got varying degrees of black, um, we really don't want to um, get rid of those because we want it to look like a drawing. We're not trying to turn this into something that looks like it was done digitally. Um, the artist actually wants some of the pen strokes and imperfections, all that, so we don't want to mess that up. Anyway, we are going to go around and just just very roughly kind of get out some of these areas where um, do, do, do. Now I'm doing this on a Wacom pen tablet, <clears throat> which probably makes it a lot easier 
than a pen pad um, with a mouse this would probably be really just almost impossible <clears throat> So really all I'm after here is the large areas I want to start off and, and just kind of get uh, this stuff where I've got mask inside these big black areas. I don't want that. Um, and as you can see, sometimes the, the masking of these um, and the selection can take a little bit of time. Um, but the, honestly, if you want a, a really good job if you want it to look really good um, you're just gonna have to do some of this um, some images are easier than others in terms of selecting I've got some where I can select and just do a few quick passes with my uh, brush and and I've got it um, these thin lines too where they're very very thin like this could be problematic we'll find out here shortly um, those are always tough because sometimes, especially with very detailed pen, you know, they can only be sometimes a couple of pixels wide. But this whole selection process is, uh, it's really your first step and it's very important. Now, I'm just going to go here and see what this looks like if I do this. See, I didn't like that because I didn't want to get that wide area. Now, obviously, I'm not going to want to have to do that for everything. Um, that just wouldn't be feasible but you do have a lot of areas here in this particular drawing where you can see things are, are dropping out I've got that I've got a lot of mask that's over this black area and I need to be able to keep that um, and this may seem like I said this may seem like a lot of work and a bit much but it really makes a huge difference um, if you look at people's reproductions of um, watercolors and pen and inks oftentimes what you're going to find um, is sort of a gray background we see it a lot and what you really want is a pure white background you want this black selected on its own um, and you want the white to be 255 255 255 in your RBG channel so that um, when you print this on a paper that your paper is just paper. Um, you're not getting a weird gray color where the white was in the drawing. Now, some of you may be saying right about this point, why don't you just do curves? And we're going to do curves on this as well. I'm going to show you some things. Curves is inadequate. Um, and one of the reasons in, it's inadequate is um, you're going to have a very hard time when you're taking a photograph um, to get that white completely even. Now there are tricks that we use in order to, to equalize <coughs> our, our scans so that um, we have a consistent lighting across the entire piece but even then it's never exactly perfect. Um, there's just really no way to do that and the, with images with color you don't notice as much but if you've got an image that's got a ton of white in it which is the case with pen and inks and with watercolors um, you're going to find that the isolation of that white is very very difficult and um, you're just going to have to do a little bit of editing and whatnot uh, let's see how much farther we have to go you can watch me do this tedious task the entire time while I uh, just sort of talk and say some of the things I'm thinking about black and white. That, I want to get this one right here. Now I kind of want to zoom out and see where I'm at. Um, I feel like at this point that I want to um, I want to get on with it. There's only so much time you can spend on Well, there's only so much time I can spend on these uh, as a professional. Um, without charging a ton so there is always a, a balance between how much time we can spend on a piece and what we are able to charge for it uh, if it's your own work uh, that's a different story and you can just zen out on this um, to your heart's content you had to zen out on it to draw it you might as well do it again um, You can see we're getting pretty close, and it doesn't have to be everything, really. 
but uh, definitely I want to get these big areas here. Okay. We're getting close. We're getting close. Okay. The idea being we we want this pen to just remain and we really don't want to put white on top of it. Um, and you may we may get a little bit where I've missed spots, but that's probably spots where there was some white showing through the pen work, as I said earlier. These big ones. This may be one of the last pieces. Right here. And we can always go back and and play with this a little bit later. Okay. Now, once we have this all selected, or at least as much as we think we need, I'm going to take a look at this line up here. Um, it looks to me like I've got a couple of spots that masking is over that thin black line right here. And uh, there are a couple areas that look like they might be problematic here. And this was the one I was looking at right here. It's always a really good idea too when you're doing this to do short strokes. Um, that way, if you need to go back, all you have to do is just Command Z, undo it, right? And you don't have to redo that whole big swath that you just worked on, like that right there. Command Z, I didn't really like it. I'm gonna go a little bit lower here. Get this, and I'm okay with a, grabbing just a hit a bit of that white because what I'm going to do we're going to end up filling this with black or um, with white sorry all right I'm going to call this good for now now so <clears throat> what we have is we have the uh, red in your quick mask and I'm going to Q again so this once again this is the Q key on your keyboard Q toggles you in and out of quick mask you can see what we've got selected um, <clears throat> the red is what is selected and the red is the red area is what will not be affected by whatever we do when we're out of quick mask so I'm going to paint this back in there all right so I want to take this white and put it on its own layer now that I have this selected, what I can do is I can do Command J, and you can oh, you can see that I accidentally selected the black. What I need to do is inverse. I'm sorry. So Shift Command I for inverse, and then Command J. And what I've done is I've taken the white and put it on its own layer. Now, if you unclick the eyes on. Uh, the other two layers it's really easy to see what we have here and what we have here is a big white area that looks like it has a lot of dirty spots um, and that's nice too because we're going to get rid of some of that you can see the areas where I've um, selected a little tiny bit of black and what that would end up doing is uh, making those lines look a little bit thinner it doesn't look very bad to me there are only a few spots and honestly at this point what you can also do is now you can edit this layer if you need to um, I'm gonna make sure that I've got a hard brush on this and these areas where I see more black than I'd like to see um, I can just just go in there a little bit um, clean this up Clean that up. Um, maybe clean this up a little bit. I think, but generally, I think it looks okay. Now, now that we have this all selected, um, pausing here, I'm going to turn this back on. You can run curves, 
and I will tell you that running curves um, certainly will make the white look better so if I were um, to go above the layer here and select curves and then do that what I'm going to get is the white here is going to be a little bit better and you have to be really careful with the white uh, when you're running curves on it um, because when you run it on different areas this one's actually got a, a nice even lighting you can see this right here may change right depending on where you do it and there's a good example right there it actually made it a little bit yellow so you need to pick a spot that's not going to make that look um, off because depending on the white balance and the and the lighting on your piece curves can give you very different results depending on whether you do it you know where you do it on your on your piece the advantage of running curves on top of doing the full white treatment on this is if there are any areas that are showing through um, a little bit of little areas that you missed you've got the white underneath closer um, than it was to true white and so you don't get these gray areas now this layer right here what we're going to do is lock the transparency and this is the layer that we selected we're going to lock the transparency on that and I'm going to say shift command 5 and what we're going to do is we're going to fill this with white. The advantage to clicking this transparency button, the lock to transparency, means that it is only going to fill white in areas where pixels exist, areas where um, there are no pixels, the blank spots won't get filled. And that's what we end up, of, up with. Now, you can see immediately um, what's happened in these areas here. You can see that there's some... Um, some of the dusty stuff that I didn't get. And this is where I unlock the transparency again, and you can erase. Now, the advantage of, um, the advantage of doing the curves is gonna is start showing now because um, as I erase this, if I miss a little bit on the edge and I go over a little bit, the white on the original layer, since I just run uh, white curves on it, um, is going to be closer to white than it was, and hopefully we won't get any gray um, overspill right here in these areas. There we go. All right. So you can see that this entire process is, uh, it's a little bit of a process um, to really get it perfectly. Um, but honestly, that's the only way to get these really, really nice is to go in and do a little bit of work like this, um, spend some time with it. I generally, when I do black and white pieces like this, now this one is a fairly challenging one. Um, I can generally get them, you know, in about 10 minutes a piece. There's, see, here's another really good example because I'm just erasing this right here. Um, where these middle spots are, and since I've run curves on the true layer beneath it, oops, sorry, um, I'm, it, this isn't going to look gray. It may look a little bit off-white, uh, but it's much, much closer, and um, it will look fine. If you don't do this, what you're going to end up, with, like if I just erase that right there, and you hadn't run curves over this, um, these areas right here would end up looking gray when you print them. You might not see it on, on the screen. And therein lies another challenge. Um, when you're doing this kind of work, I promise you that there are things you won't see until you actually print a proof. Um, other things, um, other things you may see on screen and you print them and they, they're fine. Um, da, da, da. Another great example, that little area right there, since I've run curves on that lower layer, um, it'll be better. Actually, I want to look just as a kind of a, a test here. Running the After I've run the curves, if I put my eyedropper here, I want to see... I need to get my info palette. It's on my other monitor. Let me bring my info palette over here so you can see it. Um, Two, three, seven. So that's a little gray, you know. It's not. It's not perfect. Um, but there's also a lot of dirt 
a lot of smudges, smudged areas, things like that in here. Um, but without the curves, oh, well, that's giving it with the curves. Um, there we go. That's better. I'm sorry. I was measuring the wrong layer. Um, with after running the curves, you can see that the whites on there are, are you know, 250. They're, they're not bad. Um, if I turn that off, yeah, we're down in the 23, right? 235, 24. Whereas we turn the curves back on now, we're, we're much closer. So you can see that's made quite a difference. Turn that layer back on. And let's go back over here again to uh, the layer that we've selected. And once again, you've got to go and erase all these nasty uh, little specks that got picked up. Um, da, da, da. Okay. That wasn't good. And you can see this right here. I got really sloppy. Um, that just won't do. So, getting tired of watching this yet. Got a whole bunch more of these to do. Uh, so that's the process. You're like, I don't want to do that. It's a lot of work. Well, guess what? Art. Is sometimes a lot of work. Good art is work. Yeah, boy. I, this was this is it, it's uh, this is actually a great uh, piece to work with because this is actually an exceedingly challenging piece um, compared to many others that I've done. This has just a lot of uneven blacks in it making it challenging see that now you can see I've been very sloppy there and I probably got some of the white but you're not seeing it because of that curves layer that we did whereas if I hadn't done that um, you would definitely see gray actually there's a good example um, right there there is a little there is a little bit of gray there and if I undo that I'm just gonna like that um, and many times it is unnoticeable um, once it's printed um, not always though getting closer right There's just no good way to to automate this now. Um, I can show you what we can do without this completely. Well, I've already done it. To just running the curves. You can see one of the things if you don't do this is if we just ran the curves, um, you're going to end up with these are really bad. Um, you're going to end up still seeing all the pencil marks and smudges and things like that that were in the drawing. Um, whereas this takes out a lot of those imperfections. Yep, there are a few of these areas right here. So I'm going to leave that right now and we're going to pretend that we've... Uh, Accomplish what we want to accomplish on that. Um, the artist may want to go back in and clean some of this up a little bit more and finish it, but um, for our demonstration purposes, this I think might be about enough. Here we go. Okay, let me step back and take a look. Oh, got one little area right here. We'll finish up this corner right here and then call it good. Um, there.
You can see, however, that even our, our thick black, our very, very thin black lines, they're still, um, they're still there. They still look good. Okay. Still got them. Now, there is our drawing. And it's about done. Um, the only last thing is now the black and with this, you really don't want to take the black and just fill it black. Um, you really do want the imperfections there. It looks like a, a pen and ink drawing. That's what you want it to look like. Um, so what we can do now is run curves again. And the reason I like to do two curve layers is um, that I can adjust them independently. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run curves and I'm going to hit a black area. And you can tell all this black got really black. Now we want some of that, but not all of it. Too much, and it starts to look unnatural. So I'm gonna sort of roll back the opacity here, and I feel like on this one, maybe 64%, and I think it looks good. At this point, you can run around on the white layer and just look for any areas where you've lost your black lines and what you can do is is just turn this on and off and see if you're seeing any details like these these areas in here you can tell the black lines definitely got uh chopped a little tiny bit and that's where honestly um just sometimes you have to do that just have to go erase over them. Um, another tr trick when you're actually selecting the white area and you've got that selected and your marque tool is still um, on everything, if you have a lot of this is you can expand your selection. Um, and let me just do that. So we've got a selection here. We'll pretend that the entire white area was squiggly still and, and was a selection. You can go to select, modify, expand your selection, and you can expand it by you know a couple of pixels, um, and then put your white on a new layer, and that can be very very helpful um, in terms of avoiding oops, this kind of thing, right? Oh, sorry. I messed that up. Erase. Okay. Um, yeah, this one's painstaking. More than more than usual. These these are all going to require a little bit of time. But you know, really, even then, I wouldn't expect any more than uh, uh, maybe a half hour piece hour a piece on some of these it's it's a lot of work um, to reproduce something like this just really perfectly um, this happens to be a rather challenging one and the reason is we've got a, a lot of variations in the black uh, we've got a lot of um, imperfections such as uh, fingerprints and smudges and things like that that made it harder to to isolate etc um, kind of is what it is Those definitely lines definitely look a lot better now that I'm cleaning them up like this. Um, I did see just a little bit of gray there, but I'm going to leave it. I think it it's fine. No one will ever call that into question. I didn't like that. I did see that. Um, there. That's about it. Um, gonna kind of call this one good. 
I'm gonna leave the layers um, because the artist may want to um, do a little bit more but honestly I think we've got a good start here it's almost really almost done and it's once again these these little areas where I'm just racing a little tiny bit that curves layer below it really makes a big difference in not seeing a little gray hinge a little gray tint around every one of these erasures right here um, there we go I'm just gonna call that good right now so uh, here is our piece now now one of the last things I want to look at is I want to look at the size so we're gonna do um, alt command I for info on the Mac and what we have is not quite an 11 by 14 and um, we've got three the resolution of 328 dpi so with this um, if you have the resample checked and you change the size you'll see that these numbers right here are going to change and you're actually enlarging your file on, honestly a, a very minute um, enlargement like that you're really never going to notice um, we've already got more than 300 dpi so we really don't need to enlarge it um, so we can just redistribute the pixels in which case these numbers here haven't changed at all and you've got 11 by 14 at 322 322 dpi if we were going to resample this however once again um, let's go back cancel let's open that again and let's pretend we're going to resample this 14 anytime you're enlarging oops let's do that again Anytime you're enlarging an image like this, you want to make sure you really check this. You can leave it to automatic if you want, but Photoshop doesn't always do a great job of choosing the right algorithm. When you're enlarging, I always recommend using the Preserve Details 2.0, which does a very great job. Now I'm going to go over to um, Canvas Size. Um, see if I can find it in the menu. Image canvas size there we go and I just want to chop this a little bit so it's 11 by 14 now what we have is an 11 by 14 that has a nice true white point um, the black still look natural and what we've got here is we've got a background of white we've got the original image which has a black curve um, making the blacks and inks look a little bit darker but not unnatural we've got a white curve that brought the paper to a truer white point so as we're erasing around thin lines um, and playing with this layer above that a gray doesn't it doesn't appear grayish below and then we've got our top layer which is the white that we've made a pure white and it's funny because even without the other layers selected you can kind of see in some of these areas um, where where there are very thin lines where you've got sort of this this gray and you can just see it um, I don't recommend doing much work on a layer like this without seeing the layer below it um, because if you are making if you are getting a little bit sloppy and it's showing gray below you need to see that while you're doing it um, there's just no end to the perfection that you can do on this that is how we edit a black and white drawing. Now, and that should be about it.